Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Philip D'Souza and I'm a director at Imanti Management, a water and environmental consultancy based in Stellenbosch in the Western Cape of South Africa. I'm also the co-chair of the IWA Water Safety Planning Specialist Group and we welcome you here to this webinar. Today's webinar is entitled Water Safety Planning, Tools for Development and Implementation and we've got a host of speakers who are very knowledgeable about this topic. The Water Safety Planning Specialist Group is very active and one of our biggest uh, uh, activities that we are currently uh, involved with is trying to arrange um, a conference uh, on water safety planning. Um, and this will be happening um, in a beautiful place of the world in Narvik in Norway. Um, and we encourage you uh, to come to the conference uh, learn from your peers. You probably haven't seen each other uh, also in a long time. So please uh, join the IWA, uh, the Arctic University of Norway, UIT, Chalmers University of Sweden, and the World Health Organization, um, all co-sponsors of the conference. You can see there from the 22nd to the 24th of June, we'll be in a beautiful, beautiful part of the world, Narvik. We're just going to show you a short little video before we kick off today's proceedings um, and entice you to join us at the Water Safety Planning Conference later this year. Thank you. Great. So the conference will be jam-packed with interesting presentations and workshops that touch on key water safety planning related topics from around the world. And the program committee 
uh, and organizing committee have been working hard to make sure that there's a good mix of both scientific and practical um, uh, information on water safety planning advancements. So please join us uh, at, uh, in Narvik and we look forward to welcoming you there. Um, also just to note that we will be having a second webinar in this series, which is gonna focus on catchment management. Um, and uh, please look out for that towards the end of May. So just to note that this webinar will be recorded and will be made available on demand at a later stage, um, including the presentation slides. Um, and we look forward uh, to your participation in this webinar. A reminder that uh, the chat box is uh, for general use and requests, you know, if there's problems with sound and so forth, please put any questions that you have in the Q&A box. Um, and it would be advisable if you have a general question, you can just put it into the Q&A box uh, straight and, and our uh, various panelists will try and address it. But if you have a specific question to a particular speaker or panelist, um, please uh, indicate as such. Maybe you can use, you know, at Ahsoka or at Matthew, at Martin, at Ogung um, to indicate if you want a particular speaker uh, to give their, their inputs. Okay, so I think we can move on to uh, the business of the day. You can see we have a jam packed session, and I want to just briefly introduce um, our various speakers and panelists to you. So I'm Philip D'Souza. My co-chair at the IWA Water Safety Planning Specialist Group is Rui Sancho. Um, we have Martin Offerman from Germany. We have Agung Kusuma from uh, Indonesia. We have Matthew and Ahsoka from Australia. Um, so we're gonna jump in straight away um, with uh, uh, Rui. These are the learning objectives um, of the day. Uh, we, in essence, want to make sure uh, that we are sharing uh, all of these practices with you. Um, so that you can take that into your own utilities, into your municipalities and try and address um, these shortcomings. If you do have any thoughts, please share these on social media. Um, you can see the hashtag there, you know, at IWA headquarters. Um, please share with us why you think water safety planning is important, how you think it can affect your life and how you think it contributes to SDG 6 and the 2030 agenda. So, on to Rui. Um, Rui is going to share some insights with us as, as, he, as we kick off this webinar. Um, as I've mentioned before, he's the co-chair of the IWA uh, Water Safety Planning Specialist Group. Um, he's also uh, a director of operations at Aguas del Golf in Portugal, um, and they have been doing water safety planning for a number of years. So uh, Rui, the floor is yours. Please set the scene for us. Thank you. Hello, good morning. Hope everyone is um, awakened because it's not only good morning, it's a good afternoon and good night, depending on which part of the world uh, you are watching this um, webinar. So thank, thanks for being part and participating in this uh, webinar. And I sincerely hope that you are going to be present in the Water Safety Conference in, uh, in Arvik. Since a long time ago, we want to have again this water safety conference in Portugal. The last one was in 2016 in Philippines. So we are having again this in, in Europe, not in Portugal. So I hope you can join us. Um, I'm going to have a short uh, presentation without uh, uh, PPT, without a, a PowerPoint, just to set the scene related with the tools that we can uh, use for the implementation of the water safety planning or to keeping a water safety planning working. And I'm quite sure when you think about water safety planning tools for the ones that already have water safety plan implemented, implemented or the ones that are implementing a water safety plan, you think, about, you think about tools for risk assessment. You think about tools for risk analysis because there is a lot of hard work there in the risk assessment process. But what I want you to become aware is that there are lots of tools that we need and, and that we are really using for the implementation and keeping the water safety planning uh, working. And those basic tools between commas, they are already listed in the IWA WHO manual from 2009. For example, a tool 
that uh, perhaps in Europe, we consider that it's a basic tool, that it's already there. It's the regulatory tools. Without a regulatory framework, we don't have um, a scope for, for uh, uh, the country. We have tools that are uh, on the WHO uh, drinking water portal, written with manuals, with bibliography. But of course, we need other tools, not only for the risk evaluation. We need tools for each step of the implementation of the water safety plan. For example, how to monitor the decisions of the water safety plan team, who are the persons of the water safety plan team. How can we plan the activities in the water safety plan team? And how can we monitor those activities? So what kind of tool are we going to use it? Just a paper, a white paper, an Excel that works for everything. So we should consider what type of tool that we are going to need to, to plan the, the, those activities. In, in my case, we are using, again, the, what the, the Excel, uh, Microsoft Excel tool that is using for everything. So what kind of tools and instruments you are going to use to train the personnel? Are you going to do something like this, a remote training, uh, a physical training? Uh, and how can you monitor the number of people that already have been trained? You need to have this instrument. It is an instrument, but it's also a tool. And what about system description? It took a lot, it, it took, usually takes a lot, lot of time to, to accomplish this step and to update this step, the system description of the, of the water utility. But um, uh, when, when, uh, usually when we start this step, um, we are not aware that there are lots of documents and the work that uh, the water utility has already done. So what kind of tool are we going to use to integrate this different type of documents and to correlate of this type of document? And the fluxogram, the fluxogram for the, that, that describes and, and synthesizes the, the design of, of, the, of the, the water utility are you going to use uh, a PowerPoint? Are you going to use a Microsoft Visio, a more complex tool for the, 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 to design the, the fluxogram? Um, about the risk assessment and the risk analysis here, and um, here in this step, the Microsoft Excel usually is king. And is king not only here in Portugal, is king, uh, in the majority of the of the, of the of the water utilities that are uh, implementing has already implemented the, the the water safety plan, but of course it's is really flexible but has a lots of limitations, especially when we are leading dealing with uh, um, hundreds or even thousands of hazards or uh, hazardous events. Uh, we have been using Microsoft Excel as the tool for this uh, risk assessment. And it's, it's, building, it's really hard not to commit mistakes uh, when we are do, dealing with, the, with the, the, the Microsoft Excel. But it works with all and for all. In Portugal at the moment, the Drinking Water Regulatory Authority is using a combination of a web portal for risk assessment. This web portal uh, has uh, already existed previously for the implementation of, the, of the, the risk assessment tool and the Microsoft Excel. So the water authority is in Portugal, the drinking water regulator has provided us um, a Microsoft Excel uh, as a base, as a model for all uh, around 400 water utilities uh, to be used for the risk analysis. And we, as water utilities, we need to populate that Microsoft Excel and to update the, the Microsoft Excel for the water uh, regulatory. Um, but of course, for the other steps of the implementation of the water safety plan, we need tools and a practical one concerning the, the, the monitoring of the control measures. How are we going to measure, how are we going to control and to plan the control uh, measures? in a Word file, in a Microsoft file, in a specific database? And where are we going to register the data obtained from those control measures, the, the, the monitoring of the control measures? And where are we going to register the corrective measures implemented 
for the, the, the correction of the, of the control methods. And of course, this applies for everything, for the, implement, the improvement plans, for the standard procedures, for the emergency, and especially for the review process. We need to use a tool, again, an instrument, to plan the information and the data that we want to gather related to our, the, for the review of the, uh, the water safety plan. So my talk here is just a short talk was to, um, to tease you to become aware that we are not only using tools for risk assessment, but we need to use tools and instruments for each of the uh, steps of implementation of the water safety plan. So now I hand over the, the webinar to uh, Philippe de Souza again. Thank you very much. Thanks, Rui, and uh, thanks for setting the scene. Um, as Rui mentioned, it's not only for one component of water safety planning that you should be looking at using tools, uh, readily available tools, things like Excel, Word, um, but also software, other software-based systems, um, web-based systems. And so our speakers are going to be touching on some of these tools and how they are using it um, to the benefit of uh, uh, their utilities and municipalities and improving uh, water safety planning in their communities. So uh, our first speaker is going to be Martin Offerman. Martin is the deputy head of the Department of Water Economics and Management at the IWW Water Center in Germany. IWW is part of the DVGW, which is the German Technical and Scientific Association for Gas and Water and they set technical standards for water and gas supply. Uh, Martin's focus is on the topics of safety in drinking water supply, technical economic, economic analyses, and digitalization. And when, it look, when we look at uh, drinking water safety, he helps water suppliers to establish a risk and crisis management uh, system and to carry out criticality analyses. So Martin, uh, over to you. Thank you very much, Philip, and greetings from Germany to the rest of the world. Yes, as Philip mentioned, uh, I would like to introduce uh, our web application Trim Online, which is a web service for the technical risk management for German water suppliers. So I can skip some points of those uh, Philip already mentioned, but uh, I would like to give you some short introduction about IWW. So. We are not only doing research, but we are also doing consulting and training for water suppliers or especially water suppliers, so drinking water. Um, but we also deal with other water types like bathing water, process water, industrial water, and wastewater. We have in total six departments from the beginning, so the water resources management to the, uh, to the end, the water networks, but also have a laboratory which is doing water quality analysis. And we are in total 140 scientists, engineers, economics, and technicians. Um, and among them, there are also six software developers. That's why we are, were able to develop this web application by ourselves. So the web application is called Trim Online, and um, it is a web service, so not a, a desktop software which you install uh, at your personal PCs. So, and um, the beginning or the start of this Trim Online was a research and development project, which was financed by one big energy and water supply in Germany, Energy, and uh, was in cooperation with, with um, for German water suppliers. So why did we do it? it because we saw um, that it is not only a need to tell something about the methodology of the risk management, um, risk management <laughs> or water safety planning, but also give the content. So the lists of hazards, hazardous events, and um, also important to keep them up to date. So it makes no sense to do it one time. It has to be a process which you do every year or every each, uh, every two or three years and uh, adapt it to the yeah, current uh, legislation and technical standards. So the history of water safety planning in Germany, like I said, we call it more the technical risk management in Germany, um, was the yeah, implementation of the water play, uh, safety plan concept as 
part of a technical standard of the DVGW in 2008. And this technical standard was transferred into a European standard in 2013. Up to now, it, the water safety planning or risk management is net, uh, not mandatory in Germany, but it will become mandatory as we have to implement the uh, European drinking water directive this year or beginning of next year. And the challenges of water safety planning in Germany are that we have a very heterogeneous structure of water supplies. We have 5,000 to 6,000 water supplies in Germany. As you can see in <clears throat> this graphic here, uh, graph here, most of them are very small. So not uh, supplying not more than 1 million cubic meters per year which is very small for German uh, in Germany. And many of them are multi-utilities, which are also supplying uh, gas or electricity to their customers. And like everywhere in the world, we have <laughs> limited human uh, financial and technical resources to implement water safety planning. So, um, and uh, limited knowledge about how to implement the several steps of water safety planning. To give you um, a short overview about the steps of water safety planning in Germany, it's like wa uh, the water safety plan approach or the international water safety plan approach, but it starts with a description of the water supply system. It uh, continues with the hazard analyzer. So what are the causes and effects? What can happen in your supply system? What are the risks to do a risk assessment with the matrix, three times two, three matrix, uh, to define measures of risk control and make a verification of the risk and um, document everything well and make a review. Uh, to give you a better idea of the what the web application can do, I would like to give you um, yeah, a live uh, demonstration of the web application. For this, I will share my screen. Um, if you wonder, this is a German text. I will have to translate it with Google Translate every time, every website. So um, please don't wonder if there are some, yeah, some wrong translations in it. So we have, uh, as you see here, we have the several steps of the water safety planning or the risk management. It starts after you um, yeah, um, defined your users um, with a description of the supply system. And um, as we do it in Trim Online, um, we have several processes of the water supply from source to tap, starting with the organizational aspects, uh, continuing with the water protection uh, of water protection areas, the water extractions with wells, uh, lakes, dams, re reservoirs, uh, rivers, infiltration systems, or if you have a supplier which supplies another water supplier, so external procurement. We have the water treatment plants, we have this disinfection systems, conveyor systems, storage facilities, so conveyor systems mean pumping stations and so on and we have the water transport and distribution so the mains which are yeah uh, categorized in more more types of lines or pipes in germany for transport and um, yeah for the house connections so um you can as you sh as it shown here it uh, shows the yeah, number of uh, objects of assessment objects so you can jump in and add some um, some welds or add some pumping station the uh, stations which you will assess uh, yeah after that so after you added some the objects you can do the risk assessment so you have uh, here also an interview uh, uh, overview about the process status, um, like 70%, not percent or whatever uh, of the different processes and the types of yeah, um, infrastructure. And you can jump in to the questionnaire, which is the hazard analysis. Um, which is separated or divided in some categories like planning and construction or operation and maintenance or external effects. 
So um, the lists include like perhaps 30 um, hazards and hazardous events. And you can see here if uh, you answered for all the infrastructure, the questions, you can deactivate it. Um, you can have an overview about the uh, already <clears throat> defined or, or on the risk assessment you did so far, and you can add uh, a risk assessment. So if it comes to material, you can you can add it. You can or I'll translate it. So you can have some additional uh, information, explanations relation to the uh, laws and technical standards. You can add um, the evaluation objects. You can add um, where you can choose uh, of several existing measures which come from the uh, technical standards in Germany. And you can add all measures. You can uh, choose the risk. So we chose a three times three matrix uh, with the consequences and the likelihood of the hazards and the hazardous events. And you can define measures for risk control as to do's. So uh, everything which is not clicked here, activated here, will be here. And you can define uh, who should do it, uh, until when, the priority, and make some annotations. You can save it. And as you see here, now it's full, so everything is fine. The results you can see um, here. So you have a list which, yeah, looks like a Microsoft Excel uh, sheet or whatever, has also the, all the functions of uh, this Excel sheet. So you can filter it, you can search for a name, um, you can sort it, um, the risk, like show me all the high or the low risks, and you can jump if you see, oh, it's not right, or I have to update it, you can jump right into the risk assessment again. That's one important table, but you have also this need for action table where you can, uh, yeah, what's your uh, to-do list or your implementation plan or your improvement plan. So here are all the measures you defined in the risk assessment or you do uh, or define them after you did the risk assessment. So here's a priority, uh, here's a status, so already implemented or uh, it's uh, still a to do, a need for action. You have the measure, you have the objects for which the measure applies, you have the organizational unit, so some department or some, um, some stuff uh, which is responsible for implementing the measure and the deadline and annotations, and you can, yeah, here uh, change uh, everything if you want to. And yeah, to um, to give an overview, because there, yeah, could be hundreds of measures which are defined here. To give a short overview, especially for the decision makers, there's also a dashboard uh, which shows you. The uh, key facts, the KPIs, if you want to. Um, so, how many assessment or evaluation objects were added? Uh, what the processing status in total? What are, is the distribution of the risks? So, how many low, middle, and high risks you have? And how uh, many measures did you define with high priority? How many are already implemented? And how many do you have to still? What do you still have to implement? You can also filter it with the processes. So there's for the whole company, the whole water supplier, you can uh, just uh, put a filter, just uh, water treatment. So you have, for example, three water uh, treatment plans. Um, the processing status is like 25%. And there are yeah a few medium and a few low risks. Um, as you see here, they are all um, everywhere, some signs where you can click on question marks, where you can get additional information. There's also here some glossar where, uh, uh, where you can look up some definitions of risk management or water safety planning. So what's uh, initial risk, what's a residual risk, what's um, 
a corrective action, what's crisis, what's, uh, what are measures for risk control and, and so on. Hopefully, um, well, we are hoping that we can yeah, give the water supplies in Germany, perhaps sometimes all, the, all over the world, some help with this web application. Um, and yeah, for us, it was very important not only to address risk risk with the relation to water quality, but also um, to consider, yeah, uh, like um, um, stop of supply or pressure drop and so on. So those hazards and hazardous events are all in the list here and uh, are updated um, if there's any update in the technical standards in Germany or the uh, other laws, we update also the lists here, which is one one point um, which is better than perhaps in the Excel uh, sheet, which is not updated as uh, every year, at least uh, not if you don't do it yourself. Okay, hopefully, Philip, um, I'm just in time <laughs> and could give a short overview about uh, our web application. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks very much, Martin. Um, yes, uh, we don't we don't have. A lot of time, but I think you gave an excellent uh, snapshot of what uh, Trim Online is all about and what it can do. And hopefully it's given some of the participants some ideas as to what is possible. Um, we will now move on to our second speaker, uh, Agung Putra Kusuma. He's from Malang City in Java, Indonesia, and he's a very unique uh, 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 person with, with a lot of different skills. So he's not only a programmer, but he also controls and supervises the staff of the water safety planning team. His experience includes being an asset management mentor for more than 60 waterworks in Indonesia. He's part of the business plan team, the risk management team, and the internal audit team. And he's also a certified junior drinking water expert and a contributor to the national water safety plan document. A big CV, um, a big personality. Agung, over to you. Okay, thank you, Philips. Uh, so uh, before I start, I want to thanks to the IWA and WHO Indonesia, Ms. Nani and Ms. Inda, and the Ministry of Public Works and Public Housing for giving to Butirka as Malang City Water Provider the opportunity to present what we have been working on to strengths the WSP implementation. Okay, everyone, uh, greeting from Malang, from Indonesia. Uh, so uh, today I will discuss discussing what the best we can do to strengthen the WSP implementation and giving our community safe water to consume. Uh, so in next 15 minutes, uh, I will share our experience on a novel management and monitoring tool for a seamless water safety plan implementation, uh, which we have implemented for more than three years. Uh, this is the second WSP online system that I've made after Asoka came to assist us on strengthening the WSP implementation. So uh, to begin, there is a proverb in Indonesia. If you don't know it, you don't love it. Then I would like to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Agung Putra Kusuma, or just call me Agung. Uh, so I work as a programmer at Malang City Water Provider. I'm also be a part of WST team and who role in controlling and supervising WST team. Uh, I start work at Malang City Water Provider in 2015, uh, was trusted by management to join WSP team to learn about the WSP and develop the online system. So uh, in 2015, uh, I experienced myself how to my company transforming what we call traditional system to the modern system. So today I will not going to tell you about traditional and modern system because I'm sure uh, that you understand what is traditional and modern system. So please next. So uh, I have a quote today. Uh, Every era has its technology and it has its own advantage. It's just a human or whatever they want to change or not. Uh, I cannot agree about this quote. There is every era has its own technology but it depends on human to change. Uh, yes, it all depends the human themselves, whatever they choose to stick with the business as usual, where of serving the technology involved or 
They prefer to chant and learn about what leads. Next. So before I explain further about our experience transforming from what we call traditional system to modern system, I did a small survey at the very beginning of our system development. So there is some main reason why they retain with the traditional system. It's because everyone is used to it. Every day use Excel, they are familiar using books or others. So uh, after that, uh, there are a lack of desire to learn or willingness to learn. As an analogy, some people is already familiar with traditional system, but when the new system is coming, maybe some people say it's straight for them or say I'm too old for this. Yes, it's their choice. Uh, and the last one, of course, is called increase their workload. Previously, you only using Excel. Now there are additional work to submit into the system. Some people consider it's additional work. And I asked several people who use another system, not the WSP document system that I developed the flow. One of the reason was they were too lazy using online platform as they found it too complicated. Many forms were filled out and were different from what they usually did manually. Of course, uh, the system itself was not integrated with other existing system, so they had to open other application one by one. Yes, it is be annoying sometimes, but uh, that's the situation. During the first adoption of WSP approach, uh, we use Excel spreadsheet to record all the WSP document, like the Rui in the first uh, presentation, and experience several problems, including who held the latest version of the document. Because it's our team was given the responsibility to identify risks, there were many versions of the document at the time. Then at the beginning, I joined the WSP team. I proposed to make it easier using a cloud system, but still using a spreadsheet in the Google Drive. The document collaboration itself, but the another challenge was how to interlink between modules. Because in our national WSP document, it used several worksheets and they are interrelated between risk identification, uh, risk review, operational monitoring methods, improvement plan to the SOPs need to carry out the monitoring. So our uh, director at the time had the mindset that can be continuous. He advised that we have to make an application to support WSP implementation, which is not only easy to use, but can also integrate it with the existing system. Because we already have another internal system, if we create another separate system, it will not only make it difficult for top management making a decision, but also hampering field staff to continuously monitor and report hazard in the fast manner. So our application, we call it Water Safety Integrated System. It's called it WISE, uh, which allows uh, implementation and management of WSP in real time in accordance with the national WSP manual. We integrated it with our existing system, starting from identification to operational monitoring from the asset management to work order, the KPI system to ensure operational monitoring is carried off on time with accurate result by officer and the, budget, and the budgeting system in the module five can be accessed by the finance team. We are the process of annual financial planning. So our budget plans are based on risk referred by WSP the document. Uh, this is the initial view of the WS device, uh, which you can see. We use the annual cut-off system for the document, so we can easily find out any modification in WSP documentary every year, as in the module 5 to module 11 revision. Next, on the dashboard, we, we also integrated the customer complaint system into the WSP system, so we know how many customer complaint to be respond promptly and how water quality compared to our co to our customer complaint. Next, then the start annual work plan supply chain system to chlorine demand system. We hope that field staff can quickly easily find information about water quality control in they do every day. Next, as as you can see that in the screen, there are supply chain history, single line coordination and core demand. So every information in our system, we do in our app. So every field staff can do easily when they are in the field. So this is our display in module three. We have specified also the risk identification system that we have carried along with the raw risk 
so we can select the event with the high risk and decide the priority. Next. Then there is a shortcut a summary uh, in the one page screen to display all the module. It can be directly inserted and related to, to one and another. Next. So it's all is basically on WSP national guides. Every system in uh, every uh, feature, every module in uh, our app is based on WSP national guides. In this, in this screen, you can see uh, the improvement plan. So we integrated in the, in the budgeting system. You can see there is a cost responsible person and the status so we can track the, the budgeting with the uh, improvement plan. So every uh, Friday tomorrow in the Indonesia, we always have WSP meeting. So we can track every day, usually with this app. So we easily use it using one database and all the information so in the, in the one display. Next, uh, this is the, the special one in the module six regarding operational limit and field staff in the asset management have this app. So every, every day they directly uh, see uh, our apps and so where is the limit, where is the limit and the, they monitor the ratio every day here. So it's integrated uh, in, in this app. Uh, we also have a ISO system and integrated it as well. So if officer can easily find the right flow in the monitoring their operation to ensure the control measure work effectively. Next, uh, we also have a work order application for field staff. Which system is similar to our to your delivery system, like in Uber. So the system give order directly to the officer, speed up officer to going to field to retrieve the, the information and take action if there are a customer complaints. Then management team know how to follow up. And the result, like a photo, can be uploaded by officer when they completing their work in field. So after uh, we are using this, is almost uh, four years. Uh, the, I created another survey. Uh, so I did I did a small survey that we conduct. Uh, we conclude that the previous they found the new system is well difficult to be applied. We accompanied and trained them. This we previously felt this was an additional job have changed their mind and admit that monitoring work can be completed effectively. Uh, especially in the pandemic like now, the online system is the answer as this can be accommodated working and remotely reporting. And what is certain is the new document is very clear because the system is centralized and use a web database. So this, uh, this, small, this small survey uh, can be concluded uh, every people in our uh, company is happy using this this app. They happy to using this app and work effectively because the before is using Excel now using uh, an app and integrate with their job. So I think this is the key factor of the success uh, for development and implementation uh, of this wise application. Uh, the very fundamental factor is the first commitment of the top management, which is very necessary as we experience that uh, involvement of the top level management is the inception of the WSP development is deemed important. Then the organization's culture also be formed. This is the main task, how we can change the mindset from traditional system to the modern system. We continue to do that until now by training and coaching our staff, both in the field and the in-class training. Uh, the, so also don't forget the system has been created, must be developed and maintained continuously according to the management needs. Accelerate the top management uh, to be able to make decision. And also uh, the last is I make it wrap the pandemic. Uh, we can deny the pandemic as in just the way we work, interact. And the existence of pandemic also has the important role in the success of this online system. Those who are using being offline are forced to use the online system and well maybe they first they were forced to but they get used in the end so next so and lastly allow me to continue the gratitude of wa as we are given to this opportunity listen to w west system in iwa 2022 in norway 
So this is uh, encouraged for us in Indonesia to in general and the city of Malang particular to always innovate and aim for improving access to the safe water. So uh, I will uh, share. So please, Isabella, I want to share my screen. Uh, Agung, just to note, uh, you'll have about three or four minutes uh, to okay. share. Okay, thank you. Okay, Philip, thank you. I will like two minutes share. Okay, so as you can see, uh, this is uh, our app. So like uh, Martin, I using the Google Translate, so maybe the translation could be wrong. Uh, in the dashboard, as you can see, uh, we integrated it uh, with our uh, re uh, customer complaint. Like uh, this is our commitment uh, in the module two. We you can see our supply chain, the single line. This is our single line in, in Malang City. So we can identify risk uh, with this single line. So as you can see, uh, we have uh, like uh, like hood and consequence skill. We are using five by five uh, rating score. So it's more easy to us to uh, measure the hazard. This is our uh, module three. As you can see, this is uh, we can easily find uh, where the most uh, very high risk. Uh, this is you can see. So we can click here. Uh, this is our uh, dashboard, like uh, to identify risk. This is again uh, like this is uh, based on WSP national document. This is our budgeting system. You can see, uh, yeah. And this is the model six. Everything in here, every field in the staff. Uh, Every day they see here, they monitor here. So they only use this app to monitor every day job. So I think that is uh, my presentation. I hand over to Philip. Thank you, Philip. Thanks, Agung. And thanks for sharing uh, the journey that uh, you have gone through, the lessons that you've learned. And uh, I'm sure the journey is not ending, uh, you know, it's continuing. And uh, we hope you can continue to share some of those. Uh, key insights that you've already picked up with us. Um, so we're going to move on to our next speaker, and that's uh, Matthew Higginbotham from Melbourne Water in Australia. Um, Matthew studied uh, chemical engineering, and then he started to work in different roles within the brewing industry. And then three years ago, he decided he's going to switch from beer to water. Um, and he's, he's worked on both sewage and drinking water quality management systems. And most recently, uh, he's been appointed as Melbourne's water drinking water quality management systems lead. Um, Matthew, over to you. Thanks, Philip. And thanks to the IWA for having me. It's great to be here. Um, today, I was gonna take you through Melbourne Water's integrated risk and incident system. Uh, which is the main tool we use to manage uh, the administration of risks. But before I do that, I'll give you a bit of context on the water supply arrangements in Melbourne, a little bit of information on our regulatory context and how we go about implementing water safety planning. I was going to give a demo of the software, but I'm having some connection issues. So there might be some very nice screenshots to look at instead. And then I'll have a bit of discussion of what's what's good about our system, what's bad, and what you'd want to think about if you're looking to implement something like this for yourself. So to start with, funnily enough, Melbourne Water is based in Melbourne, which is in uh, the state of Victoria in Australia. We are, I guess, connected with Yarra Valley Water. So Ahsoka from Yarra Valley Water will speak to you next. We've got a wholesaler and retailer arrangement in Melbourne. So Melbourne Water is responsible for catchment management, gathering water and treating it, responsible for bulk sewage services and responsible for drainage services. And then we on sell those to retail water companies who sell them to the residents as customers. Um, so water quality management for us is really a team affair. Melbourne's a bit unique in that half our water is supplied from protected catchments. So if you know your HPT manual category one catchments that only require chlorine, the, the source water is very clean. The other half of that is split between desalinated water, about 25%, and 25% conventionally treated. So sedimentation, filtration, chlorination, the works. We supply about 450 gigalitres a year across the whole system. 
that's treatment spread across 16 primary water treatment plants. So all the way down to a 500 litre per day local uh, system in the Arrow Valley up to a 600 megalitre per day conventional treatment plant. We were quite an early adopter along with the retail water companies of HACCP for drinking water quality management. Um, so our drinking water quality risk management plan, which is the equivalent of water safety plan, quality risk register and HACCP plans manage water quality risks across the system. Just a little bit about regulation in Australia. So every state and territory in Australia has some form of required water safety plan. So it's mandatory and it's been mandatory for quite a while. Um, we have a, a national framework called the Australian Drinking Water Guidelines uh, and each state has their own legislation that requires it. So for Victoria, that's a Safe Drinking Water Act, but it's similar in different states. As Rui was saying at the start, it's not just a water safety plan, it's just one tool across a whole drinking water quality management system. So the water safety plan or risk management plan is still just a Microsoft uh, Word document. It has some fancy ar archiving and, and version control behind it, but at its core is still a Word document. Our risk register, so the repository of all of our risks is in bespoke software, and it's a combined assurance, compliance, risk, event, and action tracking software, which is what I'll be showing you today. We've also got HACCP plans, standard oper operating procedures, forms, checklists, um, that see it in Word Documents Inflow. We have a monitoring program as part of this as well. So in Virus, this is our, our lab software. Uh, so all of our ver lab, lab verification results get stored there. And our online, live online monitoring, so looking at our CCPs is in SCADA. Supporting, there's other things that support that as well. So if things go wrong, we've got contingency plans written. We have preset incident structures, which is all recorded. We've got um, asset management group and maintenance group who've got their own enterprise asset management software and not included in here, but still very important. We have a big training database as well to make sure everyone's current on, on all these moving parts. So IRIS specifically is one location that tracks events, risk, assurance, compliance, and improvement. So the kind of events we track would be any incidents or water quality incident would go in there a near miss, or if we find a hazard that can be recorded. We have a risk module. So all of Melbourne's, not just water quality, but all of Melbourne water's risks get stored in there, strategic and operational. We've also got a list of controls detailed in there to manage those risks. We have an assurance module. So this is how we track our verification and that we actually do what we said we would do. So we track everything from an operator check that a chlorine analyzer has been calibrated all the way up to our biannual regulatory audit. Everything lives in that assurance module with automated reminders and record tracking. And we have a compliance module. So we've gone through and listed all the legislation, regulations, ministerial directions and standards we must comply with that live in the compliance module. Supporting all that is action tracking. So we're able to track improvement actions for all of these things within the software. Now I'll try one more time. I my VPN connection has just fallen over. So it's not letting me in to show you the actual software, but I have some backup screenshots. So I'll share my screen so that you can see that. So this is the IRS landing page. You can see across the top, those five modules I mentioned before, we've also got shortcuts um, for common things people would like to do. If they want to add an event, add a risk, look at their actions. The landing page for the risk module itself, you can see we've got our risk register. So that's all the Melbourne Waters risks live in there. We have all of our controls and actions associated with those to improve them. The, the landing page for these is a dashboard. So as I said, because it's everything, you can see an example that are not water quality, but they live in here. So for the IT risk register, this, as you can see who owns the risk, it's unique identifier, which you can search it by, what kind of risk it is, if it's active or not. So there's risks that we will have eliminated. So say we've put a new piece of treatment infrastructure in that's no longer a risk instead of deleting that from our system, we just inactivate it. So if we need to go back, we can show we've managed that risk. It just doesn't show up. Okay. So the good things about this system are having it all in one spot is really powerful. So being able to have an event, identify a risk, put corrective actions all in one place is really good to be able to show an auditor. It's really good for our managers to know we're actually fixing things instead of just letting them sit there. And it helps track all these moving parts because we've got a very complex system. It's really nice to be able to search by location or risk type or to have bespoke searches. So I want to know about my higher risk with ball controls. It's great to have clear accountability. So who ultimately is responsible for this? Um, 
and it's good for them in that there's a really good breadth and depth of reports so they can be comfortable their risks are controlled. When used well, it supports standardization, but there's also a con there, which I'll talk about in a second. And in the assurance model, you can periodize this stuff. So I'll get a reminder every three years to review a HACCP plan if I haven't already, for example. Uh, it's really useful that you don't lose track again of the moving parts. Some of the stuff I don't like about the system. So this is developed bespoke for us and it's an external software package that we license to use. It can be quite expensive to modify it. Now it's been set up and there's also ongoing costs in licensing. Plus we employ a couple of dedicated internal support roles. There was also a lot of work to set up initially, not, not that it was me doing it, but talking to the team who implemented it, it took a long time to get right. As I showed before, we've got so many different systems interacting together in our management system. You can do some double handling. So in this example, I, had to, I raised a service request to lock off a valve. So to use the enterprise asset maintenance software, I pretty much repeated the same information twice to get into both systems. So that can be a bit painful. And it also still relies on that Word or Microsoft Office Suite background. So we're not quite free from that yet. It's not standalone. As I just mentioned, it can support standardization. So you can define all those risks and controls really well. We don't always do it though. So if, if you don't do that initial step, have really clear risks, really clear controls with common names, you can end up with the same thing being talked about four or five different ways. And that creates a lot of work down the track. And as you can probably tell, it's quite complex. There's lots of things to learn. So for new users, it's pretty hard to understand what you've got to do. I had to think about if I was going to implement something like this from scratch, I'd say the most important thing is to get started, especially if you haven't done any water safety planning at all. So we've built this up over 20 years and every year it gets a little bit better. I think you should just start if you haven't already. If you're going to implement this, build a solid foundation first and try and think about it holistically. So don't just think I want to pay a consultant to build it. It's also, I've got to run it, license it. I need to pay people to support it. Um, ideally, it should interact with your other systems easily. If you've already got an Excel and paper-based system, do the work up front to standardize early because it'll make your life easier later on. And I think the last one is when you're rolling this out, engage really widely. So some people don't love this system. And I think if we helped them solve a problem, so understand their needs first, give them this tool to fix it, they'd be a lot more engaged. That's pretty much it. Sorry for the technical issues in there, but I'll hand back to you now, Phil. Thank you, Matthew. And um, thank you for sharing some of those useful insights uh, around pros and cons and, and key considerations, you know, for utilities and municipalities or, or considering going down a similar path. I like what you said around getting started. Um, I think a lot of times we get paralyzed and that, that leads to inaction. So, so thanks for those insights. Our final speaker before we head into the question and answer session and the panel discussion is Ahsoka J. Ratna. Ahsoka is the water quality specialist at Yarrow Valley Water in Melbourne, Australia. He's a civil engineer by training and he has 40 years of experience in the water industry. He's been with Yarrow Valley Water since 1997 and his main responsibilities include development and implementation of water safety plans. Um, also looking at the HACCP system, he's developed water quality improvement strategies, been part of staff and, and training of contractors. Um, he's also uh, been assisting the World Health Organization um, with several water safety planning initiatives. And a lot of the people maybe on this call um, have seen Ahsoka's face, you know, as part of uh, water safety planning capacity, capacity building programs. Um, he's trained and audited uh, systems in the Philippines, Vietnam, India, Malaysia, Thailand, Ghana, Indonesia, and Sri Lanka. A lot of experience. Uh, you can share a lot with us, Ahsoka. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thanks, Philip, for the introduction. Um, so you've heard from the three, my uh, fellow uh, presenters about uh, web-based or software-based tools. I'm going to change the gear and talk about something different. Uh, all right. Um, so Matthew mentioned about uh, the catchment to tap in Melbourne system, but we have two water supply suppliers or water water utilities. So I'll touch on an important aspect of how we manage catchment to tap to strengthen what um, Matthew was saying, and uh, a very quick uh, info about how we have been going about 
uh, implementing water safety plans. And um, I guess advantages and disadvantages of, um, you know, paper-based or what, what we call digital version uh, uh, of, of a water safety plan. Um, just a little bit about, you know, what matters in the end. And uh, where are we heading at Tierra Valley Water in using tools uh, into the future? Apologies. Uh, Matthew mentioned about our regulatory framework. Um, just uh, to strengthen what, what Matthew was saying, um, we started voluntarily implementing HACCP plans in 1999. At the time, there were no regulations, but we, we were, that's why we were uh, in Melbourne, the water companies considered at in implementing more safety plans around the world, but then it became mandatory in 2004. Now, we all follow that framework in the Australian Drinking Water Guidelines as the framework to develop um, water safety plans, and so we call them risk management plans. Now, I, I thought it, I'll touch on this because it is important, and I have seen many questions come up on how do you manage catchment to tap when you have more than one water utility or water supplier. Um, as Matthew mentioned, Melbourne Water manages catchment treatment and what we call the transfer network or the large pipes and, the, and some storage reservoirs. And then the responsibility of supplying water and storage services um, moves to the retail water companies. And we manage a large, net, large network of distribution network, larger pipes, smaller pipes, what we call reticulation system, also importantly, the customer. So how do we make sure we manage this transferable risk um, uh, uh, in, a, in a very efficient, uh, efficient manner without, uh, uh, without, it, without any um, uh, uh, failures? Uh, so we have a, 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 a binding, legally binding document called bulk water supply agreement, which talks about um, supplying water, including water supply, uh, reliability, and water quality. So that is uh, the mechanism, and there's a lot of details in that. Our system is very complex. I'll just quickly show you what it means. So, so what you see on the screen, um, there's a little circle on the uh, in here. That's that's Melbourne City, and then you've got this large pipe network, and then our distribution system, and then if you add all our pipes, it looks like that. But if we add on top of that um, all our storage system, I think it'll be a completely dark picture. Um, so in Yarra Valley water system alone, we have over 10,000 kilometers main. Um, oops. Yes. And if you um, look at uh, how from one, en one end of the system to the uh, other end, it's about 100 kilometers. Now, Matthew used uh, this. Um, this this diagram to show their drinking water system. I thought I'll use the same 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 uh, uh, diagram to explain what we do. Now the difference at Yarra Valley Water is we just use a paper, uh, a, a controlled document uh, for our risk management plan uh, and um, and our uh, asset plan, right? So they are they are. They are simple word documents, but they are controlled, very well controlled documents, right? And um, we also use similar to Melbourne Water for managing all our asset management works, asset management software called Maximo, same as Melbourne Water. And I think um, Agung mentioned they use the asset management system because this is important to make sure your water safety plan is, 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 is working. And we also have a emergency management uh, contingency plans, very similar to Melbourne Water. We use slightly different systems. Uh, and also enterprise um, asset management software, like uh, Tricky Water Monitoring Program is a standalone program. It's actually integrated into the Maximo and also our SCADA. And, um, and we can see Melbourne Water's key sites and, Mel and vice versa. So it's very similar with slight changes. Now. Um, our system is very simple, right? Our tool is a Word document. Now, I've just shown you an extract here. 
it is from day one, from December 1999, we just used not even Excel. So uh, it, it is um, a, a Word document. And then we have another document, uh, an overarching document called the risk management plan uh, since the regulations came in in 2004. Uh, which, which is almost like a roadmap showing how we comply with every requirement in the regulations. The HACCP plan contains your risk register and, and, uh, and, and then uh, pretty much sim similar to the water safety plans uh, we see around the world, all the components of that. But our risk register is very simple. We use a five by five matrix, very simple matrix. And um, uh, as you can see, it is a living document. So. Uh, uh, it's very simple, but it works. Now, what are the advantages of this? It's simple and easy to use uh, all in one place. It is a controlled document and it is, um, the changes are trackable. Uh, so every time we change the document, um, we can track the history. However, if someone wants to change or add a risk, they have to come to uh, basically the team team leader or the administrator to add that risk. So the person who's done that change is not captured currently, but uh, the changes are captured. Um, one of the advantages, which is probably very unique and probably it's, it's very, very rare, is managed by one team leader, which is uh, from 1999. So um, that's probably one uh, reason for that uh, uh, success. But we do have checks and balances similar to what Matthew uh, was saying, you know, um, uh, um, things like senior management reviews, internal and external audits. Um, and then uh, as Matthew said, you know, we work across, across various parts of the organization. So we have several teams and working groups. Now, one of the important things in here is we, we review it continuously, what I call a rolling review. So we don't have schedule, you know, every six months, every year reviews. It's a rolling review. So throughout the year, we review our risks. Uh, 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 and, and that's something that we introduced a couple of years ago. Uh, on top of that, if there's an incident, we go and review as required. But also um, that management commitment uh, Agung was talking about, that is critical. And we have, um, you know, management, um, uh, not only the commitment, but also senior management, including all the way up to the board, uh, the review of how we implement water safety plans. But we also conduct awareness training at various levels from the board to our um, uh, executive team, all the way down to the people who work in the trenches. What are the dis disadvantages? Of course, uh, relying on individuals is, is a big risk. Uh, to the organization because the, the knowledge is centered around those people. Um, so even though it is a controlled document and it's it's uh, yeah it's it's a ISO sort of you know certified document control system, um, tracking of changes in one central place is not possible. So um, some of the things are tracked differently. So that's a bit of a disadvantage. And obviously it depends on humans uh, or individuals uh, changing or managing the, um, the WSP uh, document. Uh, having said that, and you, you heard from the previous presenters there about these yeah, software-based or web-based tools, Guess what? We are also going to move into uh, a software-based management system, but it, it is not just for water safety plans, right? It's a management tool for water safety plan. Um, our ISO 14,000 accreditation, ISO 9001 quality accreditation, it will include um, how we manage trade weight system, which is certified ISO 22,000. Occupational health and safety. safety. Um, risks will be managed through this um, software-based uh, system. Storage system risks, recycled water. We have uh, three areas uh, where we have a third pipe system. And also uh, project-based risk assessment. So we do a lot of projects 
risk-based risk assessments. So this tool, now similar to what Matthew was saying, we will not be copying and paste, cutting everything from the water safety plan document into this. It's mainly to improve the way we manage uh, the implementation. So our risk register will be much more transparent, much more trackable than uh, now. Uh, and, and also how we manage our operational monitoring, critical control points, how we manage our audits, all will be captured in one place and it will be easy and it will be um, easy to manage by pretty much anyone uh, in the organization. So it is a totally integrated uh, management system that's currently being um, trialed uh, across the organization. So what are the key messages? So similar to what Matthew was saying, it is all about what works for you. Yeah. We have been implementing board safety plans yeah, more than anybody else, else in the world. But as you can see, the simple word-based word, uh, word -based document worked for us. And so keep in mind of your local context. Know what you're doing. Transparency is, is the important, you know, um, then that's where sometimes the software will help, uh, but you can also have that uh, uh, as well. So, um, so most important aspect is implementation and operationalization. I think that's what I will be looking at in the end, uh, but learn from the experience from the, of the others, pretty much, you know, we have been talking to people like uh, Matthew to get there, uh, uh, learn from them and try before we buy, so do some trials. And that's it, sorry, uh, Philip. Uh, Thanks, Asoka. Yeah, no, thank you. And for sharing all those insights, I think very important messages that you were saying there around uh, making sure that, you know, when one's looking at software, it can help you, you know, make the process more transparent and sustainable in the long term. but you need to consider what's going to work uh, for your context and your systems. So ladies and gentlemen, we are uh, running out of time, but we do have uh, a quick poll that we'd like to launch with you. And then also just wrap up um, with uh, some uh, questions and answers. Um, my panelists have uh, already been answering a lot of the questions. So um, they might uh, all actually be in a be addressed at the moment and then we'll we can chat for a couple more minutes so you can see on the screen um, we have a poll which is asking which tools do you use for water safety planning activities um, and it's asking you there if you use document and or spreadsheet tools if you've got specialized water safety planning or risk management tools or if you use a combination a hybrid of the above or if currently you are doing nothing or you don't know i'm going to hand over uh, to Rui Sancho, and he will take us through the poll results. Over to you, Rui. Thank you very much, Philip. Thank you for all the, the panelists for this wonderful uh, webinar, in my personal opinion. Uh, it's been a long time ago that I've not seen so lots of good content related with how to organize implementation and uh, of a, a water safety plan, and how can we use these software-based tools for implementation in a water safety plan. And for sure, there are not a lot of many people or many water utilities using this kind of, of tools. So this is not already the future. It's not the future, this is the present. Okay, Isabella, whenever you have the results from the poll, please let me know. Until that moment, I'm going to address, okay, we already have the results from the poll. Thank you very much. So this is not, a really huge surprise. So around 51% of the answers uh, are say, stating that they are using documents or spreadsheet, shoot, spreadsheet tools to implement the water safety plan. Only 8% of the answer represent uh, really a few number of water utilities are, are implementing a specialized water safety plan or risk management tool. 25% uh, are using a combination of the above and 16% they don't know because they have not started or they are going to start or they are just uh, thinking about the process. So I have a, um, a couple of questions here, uh, three or four questions that I've, I've got inspired from the Q&A Q &A posed by the, the participants. 
And one of them, it's a tricky question from my good friend, Rory. And uh, the question that he um, posed to us, and I would like to address for the panelists, is related with uh, uh, the platforms that we can, can be provided by third parties to the water utilities. So how can we ensure that the property of the data keeps with the water utility once we want to end the contract with, um, with the, the, the service provider. So who wants to answer this question? Martin, Ogun, or Matthew? So the question, the I question can, is- I, I okay. can try. So um, for me, it's, it's hard to answer the question in detail because I'm not a software developer, but um, it is, so at least uh, in Trim Online, it's possible to de delete all data. So if you are um, a company you, and you delete your whole company, all the data which are referred to the company or connected with the company, so all measures you defined, all annotations you made are deleted. <clears throat> I don't know um, how long it takes really that there is nothing left because we also have some backups, of course. Um, that's, I think, uh, in the discussion with our uh, software developers, that's a tricky question. So, uh, <laughs> because uh, you have from a service, you always make some, some backups and to delete also these data within the backups, that's, that's quite hard. But um, yeah, that's all always a question one the data security and uh, deleting all data and uh, the data protection of your personal data which is also regulated in europe uh, which are quite high standards yeah okay any other mm -hmm. comments from the other panelists related with this issue just that we no one water has a big data center so all of our operational data is stored locally to avoid this issue so there's always a risk we want the tool we use to access it might change and not be supported, but we won't lose the data. Okay. Short of something terribly, terribly going wrong anyway. Same here, I guess. Um, yeah. It, it, and also I think cybersecurity Matthew is just another, uh, uh, now it's got very high profile because of hacking, et cetera. So um, we, to get, um, IT clearance is, is getting harder and harder, which is very reasonable because, you know, there's potentially someone can hack onto your system. So you have to be very careful on that. Okay. I can have some comment. So uh, in in Malang, uh, we we have like a backup system, uh, like, a, like a, a disaster recovery system. So there is uh, when you have system, you always must have a backup, backup, and backup. So when when the people hacking, you have another backup to to uh, to convert your existing to the production. I think that uh, uh, is very possible to do. Okay, thank you very much. Um, another question, and this question also can give some um, uh, information for Azoka. I hope. Um, how have you planned the transition from the paper, paper or spreadsheet or Word documents to a software-based uh, online tool? How do you have you planned? How hard it was? Uh, yeah, that's, that's a great question. Uh, I think, um, as I said, you have to take time and not rush. Um, so it's, um, you know, it's it's taken more than 12 months uh, so the plan is is defining what each individual area of the business for example if i'm re i'm responsible for the water safety plan the people who um uh, a team of experts who, who are working on uh, purchasing this software they talk to each individual subject matter experts uh, across various systems and ask us what do you want and then then we have we work with the software developer uh, to check the capability of uh, what's uh, of the system and whether that's going to work uh, especially you know changes if i want to change from five by five metrics to a four by four metrics uh, that's you know is that easy can i do it uh, or do we need to go back to the software developer and pay uh, and a hefty fee. 
So things like that. So it is, um, it, it's basically going through everything what, uh, what you want to, I guess, transition into that system. So as I said before, we're not transitioning the whole document. It's the key components like the risk management and, and tracking. Uh, okay. So it, it, it basically what, what you want. And we are in the process of doing that. So it's, it's more than 12 months, I can tell you, since we've started this uh, discussions with the, uh, with the team of experts who are helping us to get what we want. And also the other thing is we have, we have been talking to people like Matthew who have gone and done this before and, and get insights from them and, and a number of other water utilities who are looking at this. So uh, that's also key. Um, make sure we can change things and, um, you know, we don't, what happens if this software company goes bust tomorrow? Right. Exactly. So those are the type of questions um, that we have been asking. You know, where, where, where would we land? So what's the security of the system? Exactly. The resilience of the, of the software. Okay. Um, Martin, I have a question for you. Um, how many watch utilities are using Trim for now, for the moment? It depends. So it's more than 100 um, demo users and it's about yeah the those ones which pay it's like 20 to 50 i think something like that so uh, as i said it's quite hard to to get them to do the risk management not only to do it or paper based or on a web application but to do it um, because it's not mandatory in germany until now so yeah. it will i think it will change uh, at the end of the year or beginning next year when it will become mandatory uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah they, they so are looking for it yeah 20 water utilities around it right 20 to 50 yeah okay that's that's already a good number and validates mm -hmm. the software for almost for sure right yeah. And that means that the different water utilities, they are following the same methodology, right? Or different methodology in the same software. Right. That was one pro that they don't have to look up uh, at the technical standards or WHO um, water safety plan manual, but um, the software itself gives the structure, the methodology and the steps of water safety planning. Okay. Just an, another quick question for Matthew. Uh, Matthew, I, I didn't saw... Uh, a screenshot related with um, outputs for the review of the process. So um, how can this software that we have presented uh, help us during the review process? There's a few ways, I suppose. So there's the review that a manager will be doing. Am I, am, am I in control of my risk? So monthly reporting might come up. They might see changes automatically if I've changed the risk in the back end. So there's small things that will come along. For large reviews, we still spit out a large Excel table, actually. So we do our, our workshops with the format aligned to what's in the database, put our updates in, then bulk upload. So that's sort of two, two scales. There's a, the quick, we're just doing one risk, let's get it done, to we'll do a whole hazard plan review for a treatment plan or a catchment or whatever it might be, and do it in one bulk upload. Okay, thank you very much. So I have a last question for Agung, then we need to wrap up. Agung, you have told us that uh, WISE, the, your software, is integrated with the budgeting system. I like this approach. I'm a fan of it. But um, how easy it was and if it was well accepted? OK, thank you, Rui. Uh, so yes, uh, it is uh, integrated with our budgeting system. So in every year, uh, we are propose our budgeting based on a WSP manual, where is the high risk is more priority to our budgeting system. Uh, I think uh, that is the main reason why are we using the, uh, the application. So we can easily know what is more the priority for our next year, what is the asset must be replaced or be fixed. Uh, so it's, it's important for us to uh, see where is the priority for uh, the, the budgeting. Uh, that's the main reason we develop the app. Thank you. Thank you very much, Agung. So thank you all. Thank you for the, the, the panelists. Thank you for the participants. Once, one for, once for answering, the other ones for posing the, the questions. Now um, I will hand over to Philip to wrap up and uh, close the, the webinar. Thank you very much.
Thanks, Rui, and thanks to all the panelists and, and for all the participants. Um, I think today has been a really good session, and we've heard that there are very different approaches from different countries. Um, I think it's important that you decide what's going to work for your context, because it's all about making impact, making a difference, making the process easier for you to implement so that the people on the ground, you know, it, it makes it meaningful. So do your homework, talk to others, uh, you know, use the experiences, and I hope we can continue uh, this discussion and debate um, at the Narvik uh, Water Safety Plan Conference, and we, we will welcome you there. Um, also, just a reminder that there are a couple of other uh, upcoming IWA events. Um, there's an upcoming webinar on quantifying modeling and mitigating uh, process emissions. Um, that will be coming out uh, uh, in, in uh, next week um, on the 12th of April in, in collaboration with ICME. Um, and then also the big event, uh, um, the IWA World Water Congress and Exhibition will be held in Denmark in uh, September uh, of this year. So please uh, register for that event also. Um, and then uh, finally also to note um, that if you do join the IWA, uh, there is a discounted membership on offer. Uh, so please sign up if you're not an IWA member. There are a lot of benefits, including things like these webinars. Um, on behalf of myself, um, the IWA, and uh, the various panelists and speakers, we would just like to thank you for participating and for joining us today. And we look forward to hosting you again soon. Take care. All the best and goodbye. Ciao.